All classic game consoles were designed to be played on CRT TVs, which took less than a millisecond from when the video signal entered the TV to when an image started being drawn on the screen. All modern displays have the potential to add more time for that image to be drawn, causing what we generally refer to as lag. Since the screens used in the Sega Nomad aren't CRTs, there's potential for lag to be added to that signal, and I'd like to find out how much there is. In order to demonstrate these lag tests, I'll be routing the output of a Sega Nomad to a CRT, and I'll be using the 240p test suite in order to demonstrate the difference between both displays. We'll start off each test with a standard 4K60 camera like I'm showing here with the Nomad's original screen, and as we slow down the footage, it seems the CRT is always about a frame faster than the LCD screen. Also, it's really hard to see the Nomad screen at all in these videos. While I thought it was cool when it was released, the Nomad screen certainly did not age well. Now let's switch to a 960 frame per second camera to capture about one frame per millisecond. This should give us a pretty accurate reading, but it's a bit hard to see. You'll have to follow the beam of light that's drawing the image on the CRT, then quickly look up and compare to the LCD screen. As we slow down the 960 frame per second footage, we could kind of confirm that the Nomad's original screen is just over one frame of lag. It's really hard to tell though, so let's move on to the screen upgrades. Here's a common LCD upgrade kit that uses composite video to generate the signal. We can see that, similar to the original Nomad screen, it appears to have about a frame and a half of lag. Moving on to a 960 frame per second camera shows that the lag is actually closer to just over a frame. 60 frame per second, or even the 240 frame per second modes that most cell phones have these days, should be able to get results that are accurate within a frame though, so if you'd like to repeat these tests yourself on other equipment, just keep that variable in mind. Lastly, let's try the latest kit that utilizes an RGB signal to drive the LCD. I have mixed feelings about this screen as the RGB video looks really sharp, however there's always a shimmering on this screen when in motion. It's still a decent upgrade for most people though, so let's take a look at how much lag it adds. The 4K camera is showing just over a frame of lag, and you can see right away how much clearer the RGB screen is. What a noticeable difference. Switching to the 960 FPS camera confirms that this RGB kit has almost exactly one frame of lag. Not bad at all, and pretty much the same performance as the original. Hardcore gamers might notice a difference in fighting games, but your average user, even someone sensitive to lag like me, probably won't notice. Plus, you have the bonus of having a really awesome portable Genesis. Overall, it's my opinion that if you're purchasing a Nomad simply as a collector, it's probably best to just appreciate it for what it is and not do any mods to it. That being said, if you actually plan on gaming on a Nomad, I highly recommend at least updating the screen, because not only will you get a much higher quality picture, but you'll get more than double the battery life, as the original screen was really power hungry. Now, I do plan on eventually doing another video detailing every mod that's been done to this one, but for now, I'll just give you a quick rundown, just so you'll know what's inside. This unit has the RGB LCD driver installed, as well as a Sega triple bypass from Mobius Strip Tech. This bypass upgrades the audio and video output, as well as the separate headphone output. Lastly, Sega Master System support has been added back to it as well. I'd like to eventually get back to the Nomad and explain both how and why these mods are done, but for now, at least we know what kind of lag to expect from it. Well that's it for this time. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it, please consider signing up for my support platforms such as Floatplane or Patreon, as without your support, videos like this or the weekly podcast wouldn't be able to happen. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.